So, Mr. Winkman, uh, thank you very much for taking some time uh, to answer some questions. Um, you moved to Audi from Lamborghini, of course. Everybody knows you as Mr. Lamborghini, maybe. Uh, our, our viewers do, anyway. Um, you, you made the move. Why did you make the move? Because my boss, Mr. Stadler, asked me to, and I think it's a huge opportunity because it's the second time in my life that I have the, the chance really to, to take care of a sports brand. You live in Germany now? or I'm in Germany now, yes. So do you miss the Italian food? <laughs> I always miss it, yes. Okay, but there, uh, do you eat schnitzels now or do you search for good Italian places in, in uh, well, what is ha Halbron, I think, is the closest town? No, I don't know, Neckarsulm, but uh, yeah, I, I eat, uh, I have a lot of opportunities, so also there are good restaurants. Okay, perfect. Uh, you've worked at Lamborghini for, I think, for 11 years, if I'm uh, right. Um, basically build up the company from a very small company to a very successful sports car company. You're now moving to Audi. I'm assuming you want to have like some sort of the, the same level of success. So what are your main um, focuses for the coming years? What, what do you want to do differently uh, for uh, well, Quattro or Audi Sport now um, um, uh, as opposed to what they were doing for the past few years? I think they did a good job, my, my colleagues and my predecessors. So they have created a, a very good uh, product base. I think we have to work on the brand. So the first thing we did is to change the name from Quattro into Audi Sport because we believe that motorsport is part of our DNA. Um, the history is showing this. And uh, now what we have to concentrate is of, on the product portfolio for the future. And here we look more into exclusiveness than volumes. Uh, we look into uh, cars which are daily drivable but very performing. This is part of our job description. And also in terms of the future, we have to see that not only what we are doing today is okay, but we also think about we have to think about the let's say the car or the new sports car. And this is combining sportiness with sustainability. So we have to understand, let's say, the size of the company and how to move uh, the products in a new direction after the day has come. Okay, so I imagine we can imagine uh, we, we can expect more uh, RS and S models from all the well the available Audi models that are in the portfolio right now. Like, is, is an RS8 or an uh, a RS Q7 is it thinkable to, to see such a car in the coming years? We are checking very carefully because we are not uh, willing to put an RS version on every A model which is coming out. It has to be, they have to be the sportiest and most prestigious models. So it's about uh, the body style, it's about the size of the segment. The, the segment has to be equally distributed on a worldwide base. So from North America over Europe, uh, over Asia Pacific, this is key also for the success. But we're looking more into exclusiveness than into volumes. So we are not uh, uh, looking into having all the cars as RS models. In expanding the, the, the brands, is it possible that we're going to see like a hybrid RS model or a diesel RS model maybe? As long as there is one uh, engine, diesel is not on our plate because there is not in every market you can sell a diesel engine. Uh, in terms of uh, future technology, and this means this is what I meant with sustainability. We have to see how to uh, define what sustainable sportiness is going to be for us. This means how many times I can accelerate from zero to 100, in what time, top speed, how long I can hold the top speed, the weight of the cars, what kind of uh, brakes do I need, uh, the time uh, or the, the meters I can, I can uh, do after two, in 2.5 seconds from, from scratch. So all these things have to be thought about, defined and then uh, yeah, put into a car. So if hybrid technology, for instance, helps that, then it's possible to see it in a, in a future model? We will see. Uh, never say never. Uh, in my opinion, it's important that whatever you do has to be credible. And uh, being a small company, every euro we invest in the future has to be lasting. And uh, therefore, bridge technologies are not what I'm looking into. Okay. Um, by changing the, uh, the name from Quattro GmbH to Audi Sport, does it open up uh, a possibility for maybe a rear-wheel drive RS model? Or a, a rear-wheel drive Audi for that instance? 
as I said, there is a lot of there are a lot of opportunities to be exploited. Uh, it has to be the right car if we do something like this, and yeah, wait and see. Okay. Um, last question. Um, Audi Sport uh, makes a, a bridge to uh, the sports division and, and the racing. Um, what's the best racing class you think to um, showcase the Audi technology and the Audi Sport technology in street cars? But we have in our customer racing, we have the R8, which is uh, very much the same as the street legal car. So the development goes hand in hand. So we say always oh, born on a track, built for the road. And this is valid not only for that car, but others which will come. And, and like um, we love the Group B rally cars from the early days. Is there a possibility Audi will uh, return to uh, uh, World Rally Championship now? I think uh, rallies are part of uh, history for a brand, but I don't think that this is the right moment to, to go back to rally sport. Okay, so more focus on endurance racing and, and the R8 uh, LMS cars. Yeah, for sure. In customer racing, R8 uh, GT3 is the place to be. The R3 LMS, which we showcase now in Paris, is a new category, which I think is very promiseful for uh, young uh, racers and customers. Thank you very much and we look forward to driving an R8 rear-wheel drive maybe in a few years. Thank you. <laughs>